Efforts to prevent a Russian invasion of Ukraine were dealt a serious blow when Russia recognized the independence of two separatist regions, the Luhansk and the Donetsk, in eastern Ukraine. What are the ramifications of this move? Vishnu Shom explains. Well, it is the moment the world hoped would never come. But it turns out America's intelligence was correct. Russia's moves on the Ukraine were just a matter of time. The big question, does this mean a larger war? Now, these are the big points in our explainer on why the Ukraine crisis matters. Now, late last night, in an address telecast on Russian state TV, President Putin signed a decree announcing the independence of two Russia-backed areas, Donetsk and Luhansk. We'll tell you about that in a bit. Russia has now deployed what it calls peacekeeping forces into Donetsk. In other words, its own soldiers. The U.S. will announce sanctions at any stage now. Ukraine's president has asked for international support and wants those sanctions to punish Russia. But Germany, in fact, in what are sanctions in a sense, has decided to halt operationalizing the $11 billion Nord Stream 2 natural gas pipeline. That is a huge hit for Russia, but one which will also possibly impact Germany, which relies heavily on Russian natural gas for its economy. Reports suggest that the United Kingdom will now impose sanctions on five Russian banks and on three very high net worth individuals. The United Nations has condemned the Russian move and has backed Ukrainian sovereignty. India has called for a diplomatic resolution of the crisis. So what exactly is Donetsk and Luhansk, the two breakaway republics that Putin says are now independent? Well, let's take a look at this map. Now, this area in eastern Ukraine is called Donbass. The area includes the cities of Donetsk and Luhansk that you can see over there. These have, in fact, been controlled by Russia-backed insurgents since 2014. Now, the area you see here is claimed by the insurgents, but is actually controlled by Ukraine. And the line of control over here, known as the line of contact, is located over here. Let's go to the next image over there to show the line of contact. So the big question, will Russia push beyond this line of contact to try and control all of Donbass, which is about 30-odd percent of Ukraine? Потужної проти України і не буде е, широкої ескалації з боку Російської Федерації. І якщо буде, буде запроваджений військовий стан. Чумфанця now, the immediate impact of Russia's move to grant what it says is independence to the two breakaway republics has been felt in markets around the world. The Sensex has tanked a thousand points at a stage. International oil prices surged 4%. There was a double-digit fall in Russian stocks and heavy selling in Europe. The U.S. S&P futures was deep in the red. India, meanwhile, has maintained neutrality over the Ukraine conflict. Defense Minister Rajnath Singh saying that India is deeply concerned and wants a solution through talks. Let's shift focus now to COVID. For the first time in 22 months, daily COVID cases dropped to double digits in Mumbai. Active cases are at their lowest in almost two years. Due to the flattening of the pandemic curve, Maharashtra expects to fully unlock by March, says the state's health minister. Relief for maximum city. For the first time in two years, Mumbai reported just 96 new COVID cases in 24 hours on Monday. The number slipping below three digits for the first time since April 17, 2020. 
Overall, Maharashtra reported 806 COVID cases, which is the lowest in two months. निर्बंध लावले ले होते त्याचा मधे मात्र शिथिलता मिला भी आशी आपेक्षा केंद्रानी के लिए तशी आपेक्षा टास्क फोर्स नी सुधा त्या पद्धतिक जिकाय आये ते मान्य के ले लाए त्या मुला आता है मानने हम मंत्री मंडला चा बैठे की मधे सुधा मी मान ले ले मुख्यमंत्री मोदी या संदर्भतला नतीज सकारात्मक निर्णय की थी आसमाला शब्बर टक्के विश्वास है मास्क मुक्ति चा विशेष या नारा नहीं पन निर्बंध चा पासुन मुक्ति मिलायला हरकत नहीं मार्च में दे अशी माजी एक अपेक्षा है। With three massive COVID waves in the last two years, the battle for the health department has been long and extremely complex. But now government and private doctors weigh in on why they think the third wave is over. ओमाइक्रॉन फिलहाल मुंबई में एकदम कम है और हॉस्पिटलाइजेशन भी नए के बराबर ही है आईसी में एडमिशन भी नए के बराबर ही है बहुत कम हो रहे हैं और इस समय ओमाइक्रॉन ऑलमोस्ट मैं बता सकता हूँ कि जाने के इस वे पर फिर भी हम लोग सब लोग ने सोशल डिस्टेंसिंग मास्किंग और वैक्सीनेशन इससे दूर नहीं जाना है अपने को पिछले एक दस दिन से मैं बोलता हूँ बंबई की स्थिति में जरा थोड़ा सा सुधार है जैसे हम यहाँ पब्लिक फंक्शन टेस्ट करते हैं तो हम सबका कोविड टेस्ट कर रहे हैं एंटीजन टेस्ट कर रहे हैं आरटीपीसीआर जिसमें से हार्डली हमको एक या दो पेशेंट आते हैं हफ्ते में जो कोविड पॉजिटिव आते हैं सब जगह यही हालत है कि पेशेंट दस के अंदर ही है और कुछ कुछ जगह तो शायद पेशेंट भी नहीं है तो काफी हद तक हम बोल सकते हैं अभी जो भी ये थर्ड वे ओमिक्रॉन की है ये खत्म होते आ रही है COVID restrictions have affected not just residents of Mumbai but also thousands of others who earn their livelihoods here and commute daily from other places. And there is now real hope that Maximum City could soon be completely back on track. With Pooja Bhardwaj in Mumbai, Priyanshi Sharma for NDTV. Dubai on Tuesday removed the requirements for Indian travellers to undergo a rapid RT-PCR at Indian airports before departing to UAE. The fresh advisory requires Indian nationals to produce a negative COVID test certificate taken up to 48 hours before the scheduled departure of the flight from an approved health service provider. For transit passengers, the rules governing the entry at the final destination will be applicable. Moving on to the other big story, six persons have been arrested for the murder of 25-year-old Harsha, a member of the right-wing Bajrang Dal, which set off a huge row in Karnataka. The police uh, said that all of them have criminal records. More than 12 people were detained for questioning. The police said uh, of the arrested men that three had committed the murder or have been accused of committing the murder. <laughs> A day after protests, tear gas and stone pelting were seen on the streets of Asad Nagar in Shivmoga, today the same stretches were deserted. However, the fear was palpable as security forces took out on a flag march and streets were barricaded to ensure people did not gather despite the prohibitory orders. Home Minister Araganyanendra, who maintained that the murder was not linked to the hijab row, made a U-turn today. Speaking to NDTV, Yashpal Suvarna, who is the National General Secretary of the BJP OBC Morcha and Vice President of the Udupi Girls College, linked Harsha's murder to the hijab of controversy and even seemed to take pride that the girls were stopped from entering the campus in a hijab. This is a hijab controversially created by the, some of the anti-social activities like SDPI, PFI, CFI. Because this Harsha, being an activist of Hindu Sangatan, he was, activated, he was actively participating in all the Hindu activities. So they targeted. The police today made four more new arrests in connection with the murder. Meanwhile, family members of Nadim Khan, one of the accused arrested yesterday, said they were being targeted by the BJP government. 
हाँ टारगेट जो को है मेरे भाई बच्चे को वो खाली पुलिस वाले आको रात में तीन बजे उठा को बुला ले जा को मैं हमें घर पूछने के वास्ते में वो ऐसे चकरदा होना था हमने उनको घर बता दे कर को बुला ले गए से मेरे बच्चे को वो बुला ले जा को क्या तकलीफ दी क्या करी मंजी मालूम नहीं है In a fresh development, four new arrests have been made, taking the total number of the accused to six. While SP Lakshmi Prasad said the motive of the murder is not clear yet, he also did mention that the victim Harsha had a few cases against him for rioting and hurting religious sentiments. All six have been arrested. Of these six persons, four uh, were directly involved in the assault, and two have been involved in conspiracy and uh, support. Uh, for the murder these four persons had uh, criminal cases against them these cases were pertaining to rioting and uh, assault so far a total of 9 fir's have been registered for arson stone pelting and also rioting this is in shimoga district in order to maintain the law and order the police have ordered curfew until friday morning under section 144 with dm kumar shrija for ndtv in shimoga All right time for a short break on the other side we'll shift focus to elections and in Uttar Pradesh fight for fifth phase has already begun after the fourth phase elections will be held on Wednesday Welcome back let's look at some election news now road shows rallies are now permitted at full capacity with the permission of the authorities India's biggest state election the UP polls now moves uh, uh to phase 4 the fourth phase of the seventh phase election is going to be held on wednesday up in meanwhile is now seeing the fight for the fifth phase with prime minister yogi adityanath uh, the chief minister of up akhilesh yadav amit shah mayawati and kejriwal all campaigning in uttar pradesh up chunav mein is baar bhi जीत का चौका लगने वाला है चौका एक बार 2014, दूसरी बार 2017, तीसरी बार 2019 और इस बार चौका यूपी के लोग 22 में भी गोर परिवारवादियों को हराने के लिए फैसला कर चुके हैं वो छोटा झूठ बोल रहे हैं जो बड़े नेता है वो बड़ा झूठ बोल रहे हैं और जो सबसे बड़े नेता है वो सबसे बड़ा झूठ बोल रहे हैं इन्होंने कहा किसान की आय दोगुनी हो जाएगी बताओ हमारे किसान भाइयों जो थी की आय दोगुनी हो गई होगी बता दो बताओ नौजवानों की परीक्षाएं रद्द हुई कि नहीं हुई पेपर आउट हुए कि नहीं हुए और ये पीएस टैक्स वाले लोग हैं बताओ आपको संघर्ष करना पड़ा कि नहीं करना पड़ा एंड दिल्ली चीफ मिनिस्टर अरविंद केजरीवाल वाज आल्सो कैंपेनिंग इन उत्तर प्रदेश ऑन ट्यूसडे हमने दिल्ली में ढेरों नए स्कूल बनाए हैं यहां पे योगी जी ने कितने स्कूल बनाए पांच साल में एक भी नहीं बनाया दिल्ली में हमने शानदार सरकारी स्कूल बनाए हैं जहां पे गरीबों के अमीरों के एक जज का एक अफसर का रिक्शे वाले का और मजदूर का बच्चा एक ही डेस्क पे बैठ के पढ़ते हैं भाई साहब बाबा साहब अंबेडकर का सपना था कि इस देश के अंदर दलितों के बच्चों को गरीबों के बच्चों को अमीरों के बच्चों को एक जैसी शिक्षा मिलनी चाहिए All right now to Manipur where the prime minister on Tuesday held a massive rally and lauded the Biran Singh government on providing over 3 lakh households with tap water but despite fast tracking of pipe to water by the BJP regime many areas even in the state capital Imphal have acute water crisis governments have come and gone tap water still a distant dream ratnadeep choudhary has this report travel engine ki sarkar ne har ghar jal ye abhiyan chalaya aaj bhajpa sarkar banne ke baad 
मणिपुर के करीब करीब तीन लाख घरों में पाइप से पानी पहुंचा है PM Modi is touting the BJP's big achievements in providing tap water to Manipur's households as he pitched for the double engine sarkar at his first poll rally in Manipur under Jal Jeevan Mission in 3 years over 3 lakh households that's about 55% households in Manipur have been provided with a tap water supply center has released rupees 120 crores but BJP Singh's government had promised to 100% coverage of drinking water by 2022 but as ndtv found out the ground reality is very different even right in the heart of state capital imphal at dimdiam long in imphal just adjacent to the posh colony of sanjay thong where senior bureaucrats and police officials live 50 years old amomai golmai a primary teacher has to travel 7 kilometers daily to get clean water golmai says he was forced to buy a vehicle to fetch water for his own domestic needs rain ising jamak da business ne sat sab din sat de sha ki yung ya wat do maintenance ta ngai jamak ta ina gari se lawr ga sha ki hoji mak so ising lo busat ngai ki to rule je around one year back uh, the pipe is all fitting at all na so i hope it will be getting soon but for now so far we don't get the facilities of that This area falls under Wang Kham constituency where there is an intense multi-corner fight between the BJP, NPP, JDU and the Congress candidate. And BJP Oloi is telling lies. He's not Modi ji is not God. Last they have ruled here only 5 years. For the last more than 15 years we are created all the infrastructure. Clearly elections have come and gone. but the promise of drinking water a basic need still remains unfulfilled for many in guwahati ratnip chaudhary for any tv tamil nadu's ruling tmk headed for a big win on tuesday in local polls held after a gap of 10 years snatching a region that was considered loyal to the opposition aia dmk sam daniel has this report Celebration at DMK headquarters in Chennai following a clean sweep by the ruling party in urban local body polls. The elections held after 10 years following issues over delimitation and reservation have now handed MK Stalin his fourth consecutive electoral victory since the Lok Sabha elections. Significantly this time the party has captured AUADMK bastion the Kungu region in western Tamil Nadu around Coimbatore where the AUADMK had swept assembly polls just last year. For the opposition AIADMK it's a fourth successive poll defeat party chief OPS conceded defeat saying AIADMK bows before people's verdict the party will surely win again this is an artificial victory for the ruling dispensation the bjp which fought alone parting ways with the aoadmk performed poorly winning just around 300 seats out of 12000 till 6 this evening but hopes to have improved its vote share to have better bargaining power when it comes to seat sharing for the 2024 lok sabha polls our uh, councillors are there in uh, all the corporations all the municipalities and town panchayats we have come second in more than hundreds and hundreds of places in tamil nadu now against the dmk so people are uh, they have really welcomed to bjp while mk stalin has clearly emerged to be a mass leader yet again his real challenge would begin now in fulfilling his big poll promises from creation of jobs the 1000 rupee monthly allowance for women heads of families tackling flooding and empowering local bodies in the spirit of federalism in chennai with suresh sam daniel find the tv